Instead of drawing particles as circle shapes with code, we can use a sprite sheet to make each particle one of the randomized star images. Right now our particles look like circles and we draw these shapes over and over using built-in canvas arc method. Instead of computer-generated shapes, I want each particle to be represented by one of the stars from this sprite sheet. Sprite sheet is basically a collection of multiple animation frames combined into one image. We will assign each particle one of these stars randomly as we create them. You can download the sprite sheet in the resources section below. I put it inside my project folder and I reference it here in index.html. Image source is stars underscore sprite dot png and id is stars underscore sprite. Canvas is full screen and the image is behind so we can't really see it but I will still hide it with CSS using its ID here. We want to draw that image on canvas using JavaScript. This is a bonus experimental section of Particle Systems Masterclass. I structured the series in a way where we build the basic shared code base once and from there we take it in many different directions, always starting from the same point. For that reason you can just build the base code with me or download it in the resources section below and then you can skip around the playlist and do the projects in any order or only do the projects you like. Have fun! Up here on my particle class I create a property I call this.image and I point JavaScript towards that new image we just imported. I use its ID here to do that. Whenever we are using images in our JavaScript projects, we need to make sure that all the code runs only after the image has fully loaded. When you run this code on your local computer, it will load instantly, but if you decide to put it somewhere online, load event listener is very important. The load event is fired after the whole page has loaded, including all dependent resources such as style sheets, scripts, and images. Now I need to cut all this code, Particle class can be declared outside the load event listener because it will just be sitting here waiting as long as we make sure we only call it after the load from the code inside the load event listener. Inside the load event listener, after canvas element, image element and all other things on our website are fully loaded and available, only then we will set our project up using all this code here. Let's clean up. I don't need this. We don't need a gradient for this effect. I can delete it. We set canvas up. We create an instance of effect class and we create animation loop. I don't need this gradient, so I delete it. Fill style defaults to block. I can comment out this fill call and only stroke the particles like this. Stroke means outlining them. Now I can call built-in draw image method, which expects at least three arguments. The image we want to draw and x and y coordinates where to draw it. I change the number of particles to maybe 10 so we can better see what's going on. You can see that we are drawing the entire sprite sheet with all nine frames and it moves around attached to the particle as it bounces around canvas. We need a property that will represent the width of a single frame in the sprite sheet. The entire sprite sheet is 150 pixels wide and we have three columns of stars there, so a single frame is 50 pixels wide. Sprite height, the height of a single frame is the height of the entire sprite sheet divided by the number of rows. Each star in our sprite sheet is 50 times 50 pixels. We will use sprite width and sprite height to crop individual stars from the sprite sheet. We will also need width and height as separate properties because maybe we want to scale and randomize the sizes of the stars as we draw them on canvas. For now I will set width and height to 50-50 as well. We will cover scaling in a minute. The second version of draw image method can take optional fourth and fifth arguments for width and height. And if we do that, the entire sprite sheet will be stretched or squeezed to fit that area we define by these values. Right now we are squeezing all 9 frames into an area of 1 frame. We are squeezing sprite sheet, that's 150 times 150 pixels, into an area of 50 times 50 pixels. We don't really want to do that. We want to crop out a single frame, one of the random stars, and assign each particle one of the nine available star images from the sprite sheet. 
To do that, I will have to use the longest version of draw image method that expects nine arguments. This will give us the most control over the image because we can have a dynamic cropping area. Let me show you how that works. We pass draw image method the image we want to draw. Source X, source Y, source width and source height. These four arguments define a rectangular area we want to crop out from somewhere within the sprite sheet. And we also pass it for more arguments, destination X, destination Y, destination width and destination height. And these last four arguments define a rectangular area somewhere on canvas where we want to draw that cropped out piece of image onto. So let's say I want to crop out this star. I will set cropping coordinates from 00, 0 to 5050, which are the values we gave to sprite width and sprite height properties here. Okay, so now we are taking the entire sprite sheet, we are setting a cropping area and we are drawing that cropped out area on canvas. We know that each frame is 50 times 50 pixels, so if I move the cropping area horizontally by 50 pixels, we get this star. 100 pixels will give us this one. Source Y argument will handle vertical navigation around the sprite sheet. 50 will give us this one. 100 will give us this one. The combination of source X and source Y arguments allows us to travel around the sprite sheet and crop out individual stars. I hope it makes sense. We will talk more about this in a minute. Particles are circles. Images drawn on canvas are rectangles. On HTML canvas, X and Y coordinates of a shape define the middle, the center point of a circle, and the circle is drawn around it, around that center point. With images and rectangles on canvas, the X and Y coordinates define its top left corner. So to align rectangular images exactly over circular particles, we need to offset X and Y coordinates of the image. As we said before, the last four arguments we pass to draw image method define where on canvas we draw that image. So I set destination x to the x coordinate of the circular particle minus half of the width of the rectangular image, aligning them horizontally. Then here inside destination y argument, I set vertical position of the image to the center point of the particle minus half of the height of the image. Now the star images are perfectly aligned over the original particle circles. That means we don't need to draw the particle circles anymore. I can delete this code. Little optimization trick here. Instead of calculating this dot width times 0 0.5, 60 times per second for each particle object, we can actually pre-calculate that value just once. It's a simple operation, so it doesn't take JavaScript that much work to calculate this dot width times 0 0.5, but it needs to be calculated thousands and thousands times per second. So if we have more particles, the difference might become noticeable. It's good to always think about how often are your calculations running and pre-calculate some values if possible so that JavaScript doesn't have to do this extra work. We only make JavaScript calculate that value once when we create each particle and then reuse that pre-calculated existing value. This will save us some performance. Learning tricks like this is important because they add up and they allow us to have more particles animating on the screen at the same time while still keeping smooth 60 FPS, fluid fast animation. I call that property half width and it's the width of the particle times 0.5. Then we replace that calculation that happens 60 times per second for each individual particle with that pre-calculated value. We do the same thing for half height. I separated sprite width and width properties into two separate values. Sprite width is the width of a single frame in the sprite sheet, the size of the cropping area. And the width of the particle is the width at which we want to draw it on canvas. Since these properties are two separate values like this, we can scale the star-shaped particles up and down. Let me show you how to do that. We need to make sure we multiply both width and height by the same modifier value, otherwise the shape will be distorted. That distortion might work if you are going for some kind of fake 3D effect when you want to pretend like we are viewing the particles sideways in a 3D space, but we will not do that today. I will put that size modifier into its own separate variable and we use it in both places here and here, making sure both width and height are multiplied by the same modifier value. 
Now you can put different values here on line 15 and see how the particles scale up and down. Anything between 0 and 1 will scale the particle down, anything more than 1 will scale the particles up. This works really well, so we can take it one step further and set the size modifier to a random value between, let's say, 0.2 and 1.2, for example, or 0.9 and 1.9. You can use your own range. I will go with this for now. Source x argument, passed to draw image method, defines the start of the horizontal cropping area. So if I jump around by the width of a single frame, by sprite width, we can swap the stars around. 0 times sprite width is this one. 1 times sprite width will start the cropping area from horizontal position 50, giving us this image. 2 times sprite width is this one. We can put this multiplier value into a separate property. I call it frame x. I set it to 0 and I use it here. Frames 1, 2. Source Y argument, passed to draw image method, will handle vertical sprite navigation. It defines where the cropping area starts from vertically. Frame Y 0, 1, 2. Combination of frame X and frame Y can now give us any of these nine random star shapes, so let's assign each particle a random star. We need to use integers, numbers without decimal points. So I wrap this in math.floor, meaning that frame x can be either column 0 or 1 or 2, and frame y can be either row 0 or 1 or 2 as well. I increase the number of particles, and we can clearly see that each particle has been assigned one of nine available stars from the sprite sheet and also each one has a different size modifier value. Particles still interact with the mouse if we click and drag the mouse around. And the force of the interaction can be adjusted here on line 11 using this dot friction property. If I set it to something like 0.4, which is relatively high friction, the lower the number, the higher the friction, by the way. <laughs> and then I set mouse radius to, let's say, 300 pixels, we get this interesting effect where the stars react slower, kind of like they flow in a thick liquid or something. <laughs> you can play with all the values we learned about today and do your own creative coding experiments. How about radically transforming this effect by simply just swapping the sprite sheet into something else, like this. Have fun. <laughs>